May I present my wife. Honey, this is Brother Leroy and Paul Cuff of Los Angeles, California. Delighted to have you in our home, Brother Cuff. Brother Branham, in your two great campaigns at Los Angeles, at Calvary Temple, we noticed that the Lord Jesus Christ worked with you in a very special manner. With these marvelous gifts, these earning of the spirits of men's hearts, as well as the sicknesses of their body and the signs of healing and miracles that were wrought, we thought it was wonderful. We're interested, Brother Branham, in hearing more about this unique ministry that God has given you. Very well, Brother Cop. Let's go back to the beginning. I was born in eastern Kentucky in a little log cabin near Burtsville, Kentucky. The morning of my birth, I'm told of my parents that there was a light came into the room and hung over me. My people was not a religious people. They did not go to any church. Of course, this caused quite a stir among them. It's followed me all the days of my life. Recently, they took a picture of it in the scientific world as shown here. You're probably familiar with this picture. It was proven by science that it was the only supernatural being that was ever scientifically photographed. To my opinion, it's the same angel of God that followed the children of Israel from Egypt and to Palestine. You know as a scholar yourself, that was the angel of the covenant, none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And when here on earth, manifested in flesh, he did not claim to be a great person. He said the Son can do nothing, just as the Father shows him. He's in St. John, the fifth chapter, perhaps you're acquainted with it, the scripture, Jesus passed through this famous pool of Bethesda. He find many crippled people there, blind, halt, lame, waiting for the moving of the water. It was strange that he just ministered to one. But if you'll notice, he knew where that person was. The Father had showed him. He healed this one. Perhaps he, he wasn't crippled. He was just laying on a pallet. But Jesus healed him. And then farther in the chapter we find about the 19th verse that he was questioned by the Jews. Perhaps it would be questionable today why God would pass through a place where all those people were lame and halt and blind and would not heal them all. But here I'll quote his words. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. This doeth the Son likewise. Then according to his own words, his ministry was based upon visions from his Father. Would not be strange then that his ministry should be carried on as he promised his disciples, the things that I do shall you do also. Greater than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. He said, A little while and the world seeth me no more, yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe it's a confirmation in this last days of the resurrection of Jesus Christ living among his people, performing the same signs and wonders that he did when he was here on earth. At the age of seven, we moved from Kentucky to Indiana, up the road a bit from where we live now. We packed our water then from a well, some city block, I suppose, behind the old country home. One beautiful September afternoon while coming from the pump with some water, it was a stately poplar tree stood about halfway between the pump and the home. Passing by there, there was a whirl of wind in the tree, what we call here a whirlwind. Why, it was nothing odd for that time of year in this part of the country, but it remained in the tree. It didn't leave. I stopped to see what it was, and a voice spoke from it saying, 
Do not ever smoke or drink or defile your body in any way, for there will be a work for you to do when you get older. Frightened? That's not a word for it. I ran home quickly, telling my mother that a man spoke to me out of a tree. Well, she thought I was nervous. She put me to bed. But from then on, visions begin to come. And when this comes up on me, it produces a vision. I am able to tell people what's wrong with them and what they must do in life and the sins that they are holding back in their life. At the age of 37, one night I was praying in my room. And when I raised up, I noticed there was a light on the floor. And looking around to see where it come from, it was coming from above. The pillar of fire was hanging just above and was throwing the light on the floor. I heard someone walking. I looked coming through the room, coming into this light came a man. And human figure, he'd be about 200 pounds of weight. He had dark hair to his shoulder, an olive complexion. He was barefooted. Of course, I was frightened. And he said to me, fear not. And as soon as I heard that voice, I knew it was the same voice that had always spoke to me, but the first time I'd ever seen him in human form. And he said, I am sent from the presence of God to tell you that you are to pray for sick people. Great signs and wonders will be following your ministry, and you'll be praying for kings and monarchs and so forth. Well, I told him I was a poor man. I had a, no education. I would not be able to do this job. He said, as Moses was given two signs of confirmation of his ministry, that I would be given two signs. One would be the praying for the sick, the miracles, and the other would be you'd know the very secrets of the people's heart. I told him that I had been praying about this, that the people told me that it was of the devil, the ministry. He referred to me many scriptures, such as when Philip uh, found Nathaniel and Nathaniel came to Jesus. Well, Jesus told him where he had been, where he was under the tree when Nathaniel found him. And Many other scriptures, such as the woman at the well, how that she was revealed her sins to her. When Jesus told her that she had five husbands, she ran into the city and said, This is the Christ. Many other scriptures he referred to. I told him I would go. He gave me the assurance that he would be with me always. As you know, Brother Cop, and the world knows of the great things that's been taking place in the ministry. We were thinking about whether... These visions, I would remember them very long. Some time ago, I had one, about four years ago, to be exact, of a little boy being dead on the side of the road, struck by a car and killed, and he was to be raised from the dead. Well, I told everybody about it, prophesied throughout the United States and Canada. Thousands of Bibles had it written on their flyleaf that this would take place. One day while we were Having campaigns in the Scandinavian country, we were coming down through Finland from Kobio, and there was a group of people gathered on the side of the road. They were hovered over some sort of a farm. We got out to look. There it was, the little boy. Everything just seemed just the way it was shown to me. I said to Brother Moore, look at your Bible and see if this isn't the scene. Yes, he said. I knelt down and asked our Lord Jesus to confirm his word that he had showed me and had told me would come to pass. The little boy was brought to life again by our Lord Jesus. He's alive and healthy today. Brother Cop, this is just a few of the things that our Lord Jesus is doing today in the ministry that he has committed to me. To my humble opinion is to confirm his word, the things that he promised that would happen in this day, we are seeing them take place today. Now concerning the campaigns in Israel, Brother Cop. I'll be very happy to serve our Lord in Israel. I believe that my ministry will be very effective to the Jews because, as the scripture says, the Jews seek signs, the Greeks' wisdom. We believe many Jews and others there in the Holy Land will come to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah when they see a Christian fulfilling the prophecy of Joel in the Old Testament. Yes, Brother Cop. I'm sure that you're referring to Joel's prophecy in the Old Testament, Joel 2.28. How that he prophesied, saying that in the last days he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The sons and daughters would prophesy. The old man would dream dreams, 
and the young men would see visions. Well, Brother Branham, I guess we'll have to say goodbye for this time. It certainly has been a great pleasure and very edifying. We'll have to be running along, but we will see you, God willing, in Chicago in the next couple of days. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to have you in our home tonight. We'll be praying together for the success of the Chicago meeting. And by God's grace, I hope to meet you there in the next few days. Would you care for some tea before going? Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Brown. That'll be just thank fine. You. Thank you. Thanks, honey. Now, to you who believe, the angel of God who has been sent to me to help you to believe Jesus Christ is not two foot from where I'm standing right now. If you believe me to be his servant, you'll take my word. I can't make you believe it. You only have to believe it. He's here now at the platform. Now the Lord bless you while I talk to the woman. Everyone be in prayer. These are sick people. Now if this lady says that she is a stranger to me, i never seen her in my life, no way at all of knowing her any way at all. Now I could not heal her no more than I could save her. And you know I couldn't do that. But Jesus Christ has already did all of that when he died at Calvary, but he sent gifts into his church. Is that right? I didn't say amen. Right. And the gifts are to what? Edify the church. Is that right? In other words, to see believers, unbelievers come in and say, truly, the Bible said, if you all speak with tongues and there come in the unbelievers, well, they'll say you're mad. But if there be one prophesy and reveal the secrets of the heart, then won't that unbeliever fall down and say, truly, God is with you. Is that right? That's exactly right. All right, you believe now with all your heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here now to perform and to do the things that he promised he would do. Lady, I just want to talk to you as, and the, the reason I'm doing this is to contact your spirit. Will you believe with all your heart? And if God will just reveal to me what is wrong with you, will you accept him as your healer? You would. Now, we are strangers, I suppose, are we? Never seen each other in life, nowhere. But God knows what's wrong with you, isn't that right? You're one of your greatest things. You're anemic also. Isn't that right? You believe that God will make you well? Lord Jesus, I pray that you will heal the woman. Make her well, Father. May she go from here tonight and be made completely whole. In Jesus Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Now, go re re rejoicing. Pray. Now, that's according to your faith, sister. See, he never told me one thing, just said what was wrong with you. Watch what he says, see. What he tells you, that you do. Now, that's totally up to you, see. You believe it. You said you'd accept it. Now, he took it your word. You take him at his word. Go testify the same. You'll get wet. Amen. Let's say, thanks be to God. Amen. I trust that God is blessing you all out there now to where you can't disbelieve any longer. It would be a, a, a sin for you to disbelieve now. After God has sent his son and has performed this thing that he speaks of now, and has done all these signs, and you have sent his Bible, sent his preachers, sent his gifts, and you still disbelieve him, there's nothing left for you but to be condemned at the end. Is that right? But the only thing this is to do is to glorify God and to reveal Jesus Christ. That when he was here on earth, he did this very same thing. All Bible readers believe that, say amen. And he said, when I go away, and I'll come again a little while, and the world will see me no more, that's the unbelievers, but ye shall see me, who? The believers. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Is that true? Then it's sin to disbelieve. Go ye and sin no more, or disbelieve no more, or a worse thing than this will come upon you, said Jesus. Is that true? Then we must believe. It's got to be a belief or perish. If I was God, if they could take my word for it, well, that would settle it. 
but people still don't take the word, then signs and wonders are added into the church as Jesus Christ promised to do. And to my honest belief, I believe he's finishing up right now with the Gentiles and will turn to the Jews right away. And the Gentiles will be left in their dogmas and the things that they've got in their creeds and cold formal denominations and the church will be raptured and tucked up and the gospel will go to the Jews. Amen. Amen means so be it. All right. Excuse me, sister. I have to relax my mind once in a while. Now we will be strangers. I see that you are strictly a stranger to me. You're from away from here. You come from another city. You've got a lot of trouble on your heart. You got hard trouble to begin with. Is that right? There's a whole lot of blackness. I see a black sheep keep following you like that. Oh, it's a lie. Somebody stole a lie on you. And that was a man was professing divine healing. Yes, sir. He said you was a witch. Is that true? And you've got a whole stir in your church or something other about it. Isn't that right? Your pastor's sick right now. He's got polio. Is that right? Sister, don't pay no attention to what them people tell you. They're a lie. And the only thing's wrong with your heart is that nervous condition got your heart worked up. Go on home in peace, and God bless you. You're all right. God bless you. You're not all right. You believe with all your heart? Believe God will heal you that you Believe you make you well by that? Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal the woman, and may she get completely whole. I ask this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Go on your road rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord, and you'll get well. Come, lady. Almighty God, author of life, give this woman her perfect health in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Just a minute. Something happened to you. You know that. You're aware of that. Is that right? Why, it's all over the building. And every person here could be healed right now if you'd believe it. You believe this? Have faith in God. Are you one of the ushers, sir? All right, sir. That lady sitting right there, got heart trouble, that speckled dress on. Stand up, lady, he just healed you, they had that heart trouble. You believe that with all your heart? All right, there sits a lady there with her handkerchief up crying. Just had a lick on the head the other day. She's got a headache, it's called it, is that right? Stand up and accept your healing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. How many of the rest of you want to accept your healing? Jesus Christ is right here now to heal you. Do you believe that? All that wants to be healed, stand to your feet right now. Every person in the building that wants to be healed, stand to your feet. Raise up your hands like this to God. Almighty God, the author of life, the giver of every good gift, as our spirit is here tonight, I pray that you'll heal every person in this building. Thou art here, the Holy Spirit is here. And I now, as your servant, along with these other servants, curse every disease that's in here. May the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, heal every person in here. Satan, leave these people in Jesus Christ's name. Now that the people have got their hands up, say praise God and go to rejoice. Praise God. Giving God. Praise All right, brother,